and welcome to Not Just Books, the library's monthly show about what's happening in your world and at the Williamson County Public Library. My name is Dolores Greenwald and I'm the director. Today we have some very special guests and one is Jeffy Nicholson who is our adult services manager and she's going to talk about all the numerous computer classes that we have. So if you're a little rusty or you want to learn something new, the library is a good way to uh, have fun and learn. Also, we have a seed exchange and we have a gardening program. Sharon Riley, who is a reference librarian, is going to be is, is here to discuss that. So sit back, enjoy the show, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. I am so pleased today to have with me Jeffy Nicholson, who is the adult services manager, at, which means she is over reference and special collections at the main library. And she is often one of my guests, but we have some new things here to talk about today. Thanks for coming, Jeffy. Oh, I'm so I glad to be here again. Appreciate it. <laughs> Um, one thing, let's start and talk about computer classes. Um, they are actually listed, what we do is on our website at wcpotn.org. But tell us a little bit about um, how, the, how you schedule them. February classes are from 10 to noon. Yes. And you're thinking about doing the March classes a little later in the day. Yes, we're thinking of moving our classes up into the afternoon since now the days are starting to get longer. And uh, we'd like to move the classes to the mornings in the winter and that way no one's having to travel after dark to take a computer class at the library. And by changing the times that we offer the classes somewhat quarterly, that gives different people different opportunities to come and take the classes. And before we start talking about specific classes, you can, if you see a class on our website or mm -hmm. in our newsletter and you want to, want to sign up, you can call. You can call us at the reference desk at 615-595-1243 and press extension 1 unless you just really like listening to voice trees <laughs> on there for all the options of everybody you can talk to at the library. But we'll be happy to sign you up at the reference desk over the phone or in person. Or if you're already looking at the newsletter or on the website, you can click on the class and it will ask you for your first name, your last name, a phone number, and an email. And you can opt in to get an email confirmation of the classes you have registered for. Uh, email notification three days before the class to remind you that you signed up for the class <laughs> with us. That's always good. And there's options for text reminders too. Okay. Well, that's that's good. Several different ways to be able to to uh, register. Also, I tell folks all the time that it's good to sign up for our email newsletter. Yes. If you're familiar with using email, it comes straight to your email box every week mm -hmm. and that will t also tell you the classes that we're going to be offering yes. probably within the next two weeks of that of that email. Mm -hmm. Now how do people sign up for that? Well when you get the email you can just click the class mm -hmm. and sign up. Sometimes it just mentions that we have computer classes and we'll direct you to the computer class page on our website and mm -hmm. then you can click each individual class that you're interested in. And you do have to sign up for each class individually. Individually. Mm -hmm. And also, if you want to get the email coming to your inbox, what email address do we use to send to you guys to sign you uh, up? So um, Reference does handle the registration for the email newsletter. So you send just an email with a header saying subscribe library news email and we will uh, sign you up using the email that you sent that to us with. So you send it to library, L-I-B-R-A-R-Y dot, 
Wait, no. <laughs> it's a new email address. It's a new email address. <laughs> It, it's reference dot, dot library. library at Williamson County dash TN short for Tennessee dot GOV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now some of the classes that we that we have, um, we have introduction to the computer, mm -hmm. which is still popular for folks. Mm -hmm. There might be some people watching this thinking, you know, everybody knows about the basics of computers, but that's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, this one is really for beginners and how in the basics of the Windows system, right? Right. Well, we start with, you know, this is for someone who just got a new computer, and we do talk about the different things you can use, too. You know, nowadays people have tablets, they have laptops, and they have computers. But we'll cover the monitor, the keyboard, and then the mouse, all the peripherals, the things you actually touch to do on the computer. And then we will cover um, what you're seeing on the monitor, you know, the desktop, the background, the icons, what some Just of the terminology people in. use when you go to take a yeah. computer class. So if you're thinking of going to take a computer class, you know, at one of the local schools, mm -hmm. Um, this class is a good one to come to because sometimes they just jump in a little ahead of people and this will start you really at the ground up. And if you need some email basics, mm -hmm. you also have an introduction to Gmail. Yes. So that's, that's really good. Um, you like for people who have to have an understanding of the basics of computers, maybe taking your intro to, class, right. to the computer class. Mm -hmm. And you also have a Surfing the Web 101, which is the basics. Yes, of that one covers um, how to navigate a website, you know, how to click on the little radio dots and different ways to get around in, the, in a website environment and also a little bit about good sites to use. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the end exercise is practicing purchasing and going through purchasing an airline ticket, which oh, takes you through good. several different fields you have to uh -huh. fill out and things you have to click on. And that's one of the things about all our classes, except for the intro to computer class, is mm -hmm. you really do need to know a little bit already about how to use a mouse and how to use a computer and, and a keyboard, a keyboard mm -hmm. because it'll help you keep up in the class. And if anyone's having issues with that, they can come to the reference mm -hmm. desk and we will help you get on a library computer and let you set up and practice on some websites on doing the keyboarding and or typing as old people like me know it <laughs> and uh, clicking around with the mouse doing some mouse exercises. That's that's great. And you also have some that's based on assisting with with employee looking for jobs and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You've got Excel and you've got Microsoft Word. So those are those are good if you're trying to kind of update your skills and and mm -hmm. look for a job. Yes, the Excel class is very popular. So if you're interested in that, we do offer Microsoft Word and Excel practically every month because of people trying to bon uh, to hone their office skills and learn more about Excel and Word and the things they can do in them. Well, it seems that the that computer industry is getting even more fast-paced as time goes on because surfing the web is a lot different now than it was when mm -hmm. I used to teach classes way too long ago to tell anybody. So, you know, it changes. So it's good if you knew how to surf the web 15 years ago. Yes. You may not, I mean, it's going to look totally different now. And it's the same with these Microsoft products, too. Well, what we find in teaching the classes is we get a lot of people who've been using computers and then had to stop to, mm -hmm. for a life event mm -hmm. or due to unemployment, or they were working in a different level, so they used the computer, mm -hmm. but they weren't the person who was typing all the documentation. Mm -hmm. So they come to the classes to get refreshers mm -hmm. and get adjusted to the office suite that the library is using, which may be more similar to what they will see in the workplace now. Yeah, and I see you and your staff are always having to update 
your class handouts and what have you because mm -hmm. it changes. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, I see here that you offer a Google Drive class. Yes. And see, I never, you know, the cloud, all the new cloud technology, that's, that's brand new. Well, computers, they've already phased out most of the smaller floppy drives. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can remember when they were the big, you know, mm -hmm. big round, big square ones. Mm -hmm. and, you could, mm -hmm. and then now we've got thumb drives and USBs. Mm -hmm. So that means that in some cases, we only have a few computers now that have DVD and CD drives. Yeah. So people have to learn now how to save their items to the cloud mm -hmm. because that's the next step. Totally different, yeah. So implementing Google Drive is um, a good way to help people move forward with the technology. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's a great idea. And also, one thing that's good about the classes is that you have some that are geared toward what we offer, such as Ancestry, mm -hmm. uh, we provide ebooks through Reads. Yes. So, um, and so, talk a little bit about that and how popular those are too. Well, we offer the I one on one classes where people can bring their iPhone and their tablets, and we're working on an Android class, so people can bring those, and mm -hmm. we'll show you how to use that that environment. And we offer the OverDrive and Libby classes because both of those apps are still out there for getting books from the state database of Tennessee Reads. And if you haven't, uh, if you're an ebook reader and you get your ebooks through mm -hmm. us or another Tennessee library, Libby is great. You should get your ebooks through us. Through free. us, that's you true. Your that's taxes. true. But Libby <laughs> is a great app to use to yes. get ebooks. Yes, it's very easy to read on it. Overdrive does still have some features, like it lets you make lists that uh, people really love. So, and then quickly we have we also have the social media classes, mm -hmm. such as Twitter and Facebook. Yes. And you, e, um, I see that you have introduction to Facebook profiles. Yes. So that's good. It's, We've mainly focused on helping people with their individual profile, personal setups on Facebook mm -hmm. and offer one-on-ones for people who are looking to do something for their business, in which case they need to set up a Facebook page because they are two different functions. Mm -hmm. And if the, the profiles, we can keep everyone doing the same thing throughout the whole class and with the pages, if you have 10 different businesses, you're gonna go in 10 different directions for the setup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you have groups. Too. Groups, mm -hmm. You know, you've got your closed groups and then your events and that sort of thing. Well, Jeffy, thank you so much for coming today. And anything else you want to, to mention? Well, if you look, see a computer class and you're interested in it, but the timing is not good for you, just give us a call. We do 30-minute one-on-ones on the classes. Now, we can't cover an hour and a half's worth of material in 30 minutes, but you can schedule more than one, and we'll get you there to a comfortable point using the technology. And I hear constantly many thank yous from people that have used that service from either you or one of your staff. So I really appreciate that you guys offer that. Great. And thanks again for coming. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, it's always good to find out what's going on that's, that's new and interesting. Mm -hmm. And we'll be right back. With me today, Sharon Riley, who's one of our reference uh, librarians at the main library on Columbia Avenue. She's going to be talking about gardening and about our seed exchange program. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for joining oh, us sure. today. Uh, first, let's talk about our seed exchange. Okay. So tell us a little, because you were the you and a couple other staff, y'all right. are the ones that really started this. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, we started it about five years ago. This will be our fifth year. That's, time flies, I'm I know. telling you. And um, <clears throat> we just wanted to provide a service that was fun and educational and free at the same time. And um, 
we wanted to give people a chance to try new seeds mm -hmm. at no expense to them. Mm -hmm. And also we thought it would be a good thing for parents to help their kids get started. Oh, that's true. Uh, that's true. Get an in interest in gardening. So how does it work? If I want to participate, <clears throat> do I bring in seeds or do I? You don't have to. Work? We encourage that you donate seeds, uh -huh. but it's not required. Uh -huh. uh, you just come to the library up to the second floor to the reference desk. That's where we keep our seed collection. Mm -hmm. And you look at a binder that we've put together that has a color photograph of every plant and some basic. Now that was a lot of work. It's fun, though. That's the fun part of the job. Yeah. <laughs> so we, you pick out the seeds that you want, and then you write them down on a little slip of paper and give them to one of the reference librarians, and we hand you your seeds, and then you go home and plant them. So it's and, very simple. Yes. There are a couple of rules, though. Okay. You have to be a member of the library. Okay. And you have to be 18. Okay. So a lot of parents will get seeds for their kids. Oh, well, that's great. And um, you can only take out 10 packs of seeds a okay. year, and you can only get one of each kind of seed. Okay. You could get two lettuces, but you couldn't get two of the same kind of lettuce. Ah, okay. And one thing I have noticed is that one type of seed may be popular than another type. Yes. <laughs> So tell us about some of the popular ones. Well, everybody wants tomatoes. Ah. And we have no tomatoes at the moment. <laughs> so anyone listening, please donate some tomato, tomato seeds. Tomato seeds. And um, they love herbs. And um, one year they wanted all salad greens. Okay. The next year we had a ton of salad greens and no one seemed to want those. <laughs> So it goes in cycles, yes. too. <laughs> yeah, but mainly vegetables. People want vegetables more than flowers. And we've had, we've had some businesses help us with seeds, too. Yes. We've had um, mm -hmm. individuals donate mm -hmm. seeds from their own gardens. Mm -hmm. The master gardeners have been very generous uh, donating seeds. Um, but a local business, True Value Hardware, has mm -hmm. been extremely generous. They've yeah. made massive donations. That's great. We really appreciate it. That's great. That's great. And it seems to be getting more and more popular every year. Yep. <laughs> People are asking me about it. It's not going to be ready until probably the middle of March. Okay. That's but, what I was going to ask yes. is if when, when they're going to be available. That's what I'm aiming for, to have everything ready to go middle of March. People are already asking about it. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. They're, they're used to doing it already. Um, Kirkview Farm has also helped. With they were one donations. of our early, don they were made a very early donation. So that's great. Mm -hmm. And this has kind of tied into that enthusiasm that we have is our Garden Talk series. Yes. And you have been instrumental in, in creating that, so tell us a little bit about that, too. Well, um, about five or six years ago, we started working with um, Amy Desmukes, who mm -hmm. was the horticulture extension agent for Williamson County at the mm -hmm. time, and she did a couple of programs. And every year, she did a couple of programs, and about four years ago, we decided to try doing a regular series. So we did two programs a month, mm -hmm. starting in February, mm -hmm. going through um, September. And uh, now we're working with the Master Gardeners Speakers Bureau, and we're going to be doing this year um, eight programs, one a month, February through uh, September. Yeah, we just had the first one just kicked right. off. Right, we've had our first and that was starting already. seeds. Yes. And then March the fourth is composting and yes. soil health. Mm -hmm. April eighth is alternative gardening. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. I think they're going what to talk about how to garden in small spaces and also how to garden um, based on your physical abilities. Interesting. I think that I've will be very interesting. Uh, We've and got then. A, a lot of new programs yeah, this year. Yeah, May 6th is Edible Gardens, yes. Veggies, Herbs, 
and, and recipes this time. Yes, so they're going to share some recipes with us. Oh, that's always fun. And June 3rd is Native Plants. Yes, and they're which gonna is talk, interesting. They're going to talk about the importance of bee, honeybees. Um, and the role that they play in our food supply and the importance of planting native plants to help them. That should yeah, be very I never interesting. Made that, I never made that connection. <laughs> wow. And then July the 8th is plants that like it hot, yes. which is very appropriate for July. Right. August, oh, I need this one, is Landscape Design Basics. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. We've not had a landscape design program yeah. in years past. This yeah. is our first year, and I think that's going to be really popular because it's something that a lot of people need, whether you're going to do it yourself or work with a landscaper. Well, you need I to just know the talked basics. with a landscaper the other day about the main library, and I told him, I said, I'm going to have to trust you to come up with these concepts that were, because I know nothing about landscaping. So that's interesting. I like that. Uh, water, and then September 23rd, Water in the Garden, Rain Barrels. Yes. <clears throat> I'm really excited about that that's program. Nice. I've wanted to do a water feature program since we well, started. Well, that's very popular. But we've never, we've never been able to do it until now, and I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to be really popular. That's great. That's great. And this is the first year that we're working with this particular Yes, it's series. the, it's the um, Master Gardeners Speakers Bureau. And they're, they're all very, very knowledgeable and good speakers, too. Well, that's great. That's great. Um, some of the um, other topics besides gardening that we're, that come up at the library is Janice Kett Literary Award. You've mm -hmm. helped us with that. <clears throat> and you have helped us with other special projects. So talk about one of your special projects besides gardening. Well, a very interesting project because I learned so much was the uh, Bullets and Bayonets book that we did. It was a for Academy Park Press. Yes, it was um, a book, um, the Battle of Franklin for young readers, and it was. I think it turned out really great, yes. and it was a lot of fun to work on. A lot of work, but but fun. It was. It was a very big learning curve, and it was. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And this this past Janice Keck Literary Awards was interesting because it was such a Tennessee and Franklin theme, mm -hmm. we never asked for that. Right. Yeah, one of the novels was set in Franklin, and it was... The children's book had a Tennessee mm -hmm. theme to it. It was uh, very, very interesting. I've had a couple people ask me, too, when are we going to do that again? And that's like, okay, we got a press books project that we'll be talking about on a later show, but I think that's going to come later. Yeah, maybe a year or maybe a year, a year and a half for that. So there was some interest, uh, some interest in it last time. So that's good. Yeah, we had a good, a good selection of books for our judges to choose from. So if someone wants to talk to you about the seed exchange. Mm -hmm or find out more information about our gardening projects, they can go to our website, yes. wcpltn.org, mm -hmm. or they can call. Right. If you go to our website, um, on our home page, you will click on Services, and under Services, you'll click Seed Exchange. And that takes you to a page that describes all the rules and regulations, how the seed exchange works, and it also links to guidelines for donating seeds. Oh, well, good. Because this is uh, libraries, several libraries have been involved with mm -hmm. this. So it's good to have, a, it's good to have guidelines for that. Well, um, it's helpful to us. Um, that's my, my main reason for creating the guidelines was mm -hmm. to make it a little easier on the library staff. <laughs> And so, it, and they're very simple. We just want uh, to be sure people collect seeds from healthy plants. Mm -hmm. 
and we want them to have stored the seeds properly. Mm -hmm. And we have on that seed exchange page on the website mm -hmm. a link to a presentation by our former horticulture extension agent oh, that explains how to safely save seeds. Well, you've got some gardening resources listed too. Yes. You've got uh, American Horticultural Society Gardening Manual. Mm -hmm. Have square foot gardening, which I've never heard that term before. We had a program on that, and it's very interesting. I, it's a it's a way to garden in a limited space in a raised kind of like an urban area. Yes, kind of thing. but you got you plant in square foot increments, and you can get a, an amazing harvest out of a small wow. space. Very interesting program. Garden primer, which is what I would need because I know nothing about gardening. And uh, how to be a gardener. Yes, I listed just some basic um, basic how-to garden books on, the, on that page. And I've also linked to some very helpful websites. Mm -hmm. um, UT Gardens, the University of Texas Horticulture Department has an, an amazing website. Oh, okay. And, um, a couple of others are listed there that are extremely helpful. And there's some specific seed exchange websites, too, that include a lot of helpful information about well, seeds. Well, that's good. And you've got uh, encyclo Illustrated Encyclopedia of Organic Gardening, yeah. which that's got, the organic gardening has got to be very popular, right. too. Um, not everybody <laughs> is comfortable doing that. Um, our presenter at our first program is um, actively involved in the giving garden at that Franklin Methodist Oh, yes, church. yes, yes, yes. And every, I think every, they're totally organic there based on what he said. But wow. Not everybody, not everybody does that. Yeah. Well, that's good. Thank you very well, much. Sure. Good to know. And I remember our hummingbird program. Yes. Very popular. Right. I would have never guessed. I think they're probably going to talk about hummingbirds a little bit and that native plant and pollinator oh, program that we're doing. Good, good, good. Well, thank you so much well, you're for welcome. coming today. Thank you for letting me talk about it. <laughs> and we'll be right back. When I lost my sight, the only thing I had was reading. When you discover you have an impairment, it can change your life. So take a little time to find the resources that are going to help you restore what you've lost. Whatever your needs are, 99.9% .9 of them can be met by the NLS program. There's all kinds of formats that you can choose from. You can choose from large print or braille or audio. Just can't recommend it enough. It's a free service. It's amazing how much you can get. It has expanded my horizon. And everybody can read the way they want to read using this program. For more information about the National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped, Library of Congress, visit loc.gov slash that all may read or call 1-888-NLS-READ. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule and joining us today. Very special thank you to my guests, Jeffy Nicholson and Sharon Riley, both work in the reference department at the main library on Columbia Avenue. If you would like to sign up for our weekly email newsletter, you can send an email to reference.library at williamsoncounty-tn.gov. And also follow us on social media at Twitter, twitter.com slash WCPLTN, and on Facebook which is facebook.com slash WCPLTN. And thank you again for joining us today, and we will see you next month.